It's my great honor to introduce um, Richard Freeman and Mary Taylor. Um, before they come up, uh, I, I want to say that um, you know they've been instrumental in um, being a reference point um, over the years with Elephant Off and On, and um, they're really sort of a, a touchstone, I think, for integrity in the yoga world. And um, you know we certainly all need that. So it's a huge honor uh, when Yoga Journal came out with their huge anniversary book that I have in my living room, um, you know, they had one teacher on the front and they had Richard uh, on the other side. Um, so he's really, his big stuff, his, um, he's huge, as he'll let you know. Um, he's, he's very, he's very, he's very uh, loud and into himself. And then, <laughs> and then Mary Taylor, Mary Taylor um, is actually, you know, really the power behind Richard. He's sort of in a, He's an empty vessel, and and she she's an amazing cook, and um, you know she's work, she's really helped me out off and on with Elephant, and um, uh, anyway we'll get into stuff when we get into it. But it's a big it's it's really symbolic for me, and Richard's super sick and just came anyway, so um, it means a lot to me that they were able to come. So Richard Freeman and Mary Taylor. So I'm here with uh, Richard Freeman and Mary Taylor, and we're, uh, wow, look at this. Can't read the cue cards, but they are there. How did Richard first encounter yoga, would be my question. <laughs> so um, I, I would love to know. I've seen some of your uh, YouTube videos, and I know, you know you've been studying yoga since 1932 and <laughs> in the Himalayas. And I just know, seriously, how did you first connect with yoga? Um, where were you in college or what? And I know you traveled around Iran and... Yeah. Um, I first started practicing in college. There weren't any teachers, so I just... I did it from uh, Timothy Leary's book um, called The Psychedelic Experience, which uh -huh. was the Tibetan Book of the Dead. You know, it's laid out so that you could still read it. Um, uh -huh. And... But I actually came into contact from reading uh, Thoreau and Emerson hmm. uh, many years before that. You know. Was that a direct, they taught you that personally? or Right, <laughs> I had a vision of Thoreau and um, yeah, he counseled me on how to do it. Um, and then uh, my, my first actual teacher was actually a Zen teacher because I, I went to Chicago and there were no yoga teachers around. And so there was the Chicago Zen temple and uh, they only taught one posture. Uh -huh. but, right. But it was good. Right. And, uh, and that posture was meditation. Yeah, just uh, Right. Which is ironically the one posture that's no longer taught in yoga studios, right? Yeah, the best one. Right. Um, <laughs> so, and then that's, uh, there's a big jump from that to you traveled the world a bit and studied yoga all over the place. Is that true? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I went to India after, uh, after dropping out of college and um, got connected with... Uh, uh, Bhakti, Vaishnava Tantra, the Shivananda lineage. Uh -huh. And then um, I started traveling. And part of my travels, eventually I made an Iranian friend who invited me to come to Tehran to teach yoga because he thought Persian people would like me, mm -hmm. which I thought, OK, I'll try it a month. Right. You know. It's a good fit. Yeah, it's a good, obvious fit. And uh, yeah. so I went and stayed four years. Um, that's where I learned wow. a lot. And that's where you met Mary? No. As a matter of fact. <laughs> In Iran. But she does have that book. And, uh, yeah. So. And then they had a revolution, so uh -huh. it came out. So at what point did you um, connect with Patabi Joyce? I know you were a Later, one um, of the senior students. Yeah, I connected with him in the 80s. And I'd already been practicing 20 years. Um, mm -hmm. So I wasn't that interested in learning new postures. 
but I was interested in giving uh, a link between pranayama and the postures and uh, pranayama and uh, the more interesting aspects of tantra internally. So just to translate that, so mm -hmm. pranayama is the breath work? Pranayama is yeah, extending the breath, which is very meditative. And then in that extension of the breath comes all the visualizations of deities, nadis, chakras, internal wiring and plumbing. Uh -huh. And uh, it really takes the mind into a, a deep meditative state. So I was interested in that. And, uh, and um, so then you studied with Patabi Joyce for many years. He was the founder of Ashtanga Yoga, and, um, which is the best kind of yoga you were telling me back there. It's better. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It has a lot of potential. Right. Yeah. right. <laughs> um, but he didn't found it. He, uh, was, uh huh. Uh, that was Krishnamacharya? Or? Well, Krishnamacharya, does, the actual practices that are taught um, are actually a vinyasa practice based in breathing um, and in learning these internal movements, so called mudras. Mm -hmm. And uh, Patabi Joyce calls it Ashtanga Yoga to give context to that. And so the Ashtanga means the eight limbs, and it's similar to the eight limbs that the Buddha taught, in that whatever your practice is, uh, whether it's an active practice, asana practice, visualization practice, um, there's a certain uh, context that you can understand by practicing. And so in the classical yoga tradition, uh, one is, once one is grounded in context, in other words, whatever you, you pay attention to, you're ultimately going to see that it interfaces with everything else, that it's, uh, Patanjali said it was empty of self-form. Mm -hmm. And so once you have that grounding, then you can go on and do all kinds of practices, um, highly you know, difficult practices, tantric practices. Uh, but if they don't have a context, then you might just build your ego up. So. Yeah, um, no, I, I've already done that part, so. Now just some context for me. Yeah, so th that brings up, I've studied at the yoga workshop not enough, but. Um, Your mat's there. My mat is still there, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's where it is. Right. Um, it's a Manduka, like 100 inch mat, so it's too heavy to, to move. But um, uh, that is something that I really appreciate at the yoga workshop, your studio that you two have run together for. Can we keep people's mats? Right. Yeah. yeah, the free mat storage. I think that's just a fantastic yeah. benefit. Um, but is that, you know, there was this huge article in the New York Times Sunday Magazine a month ago that was very controversial. Um, I thought it was funny that it was controversial since it was basically saying you can get injured doing yoga, which Seems obvious. Seems obvious, but in the yoga world, it was, there was a very defensive reaction, um, and it was a horrible article, and everyone attacked the article for the next couple months. Um, what I've learned in your studio, um, or at least what I've been taught and what I've learned a little bit of, is that you know, yoga isn't just another sort of wonderful exercise, that alignment is vital to yoga, and breath is vital to yoga, and why? Why do you teach a yoga with alignment and breath and maybe some sort of meditation or intention to be a benefit to others, if that's what you do? And why isn't there music? And why aren't there mirrors? Well, there's music because we have the studio next door. Right. <laughs> the drums. Hear, yeah, you can yeah. hear through the wall. So right. We that's took Tuesday care of that. So you didn't so. need a stereo no, system. No, we didn't need the stereo I system. See. And the mirrors, I think we were just cheap. <laughs> We're getting older. We don't want to look anymore. What's that? We don't want to look in the mirror anymore. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. I hear you. It's scary when I can see a mirror. It's disgusting. There's this huge guy doing yoga, hairy guy doing yoga at me, sweating all over. It's disgusting. But it's also, you know, it, it can, when you listen to music as you do yoga, which can be an enjoyable thing to do. Yeah. It, prevents you, or it pre for me, it prevents me from going as deeply into the experience of whatever's arising as it arises. Because, mm -hmm. because as soon as I get into an, to an uncomfortable point in my body or my mind, um, I can just leap right out of that into the music. But if there's no right. music, then I have to keep going mm -hmm. with it. I have to face it. 
and then yeah. it's nice because I, I move through it or I see it or I continue with it or whatever it is, but I don't <coughs> avoid it. Yeah, it's, it's, we write about that a lot in Elephant. There's this sort of American romance with the idea of efficiency and always doing multitasking. And um, my parents' Buddhist teacher, Trung Parimshe, talked about how Americans never do nothing. That even when we're in a car s driving and yeah. sitting, we have to listen to music. And these days, you know, you, know, you have your cell phone or your text. You always have to be efficient. And every moment has to be yeah. packed full of things. And why do we do that? What are, what are we avoiding? Uncomfortable silence, mm -hmm. ourselves. I don't know. Awkward. Our non selves, yeah. Yeah. Maybe in in honor of what we're talking about, we should spend the last two minutes just staring at each other. <laughs> <laughs> or we could stare at. I think that was two minutes. I think we're done. <laughs> um, so I, I did want to talk more about why and how you run this studio because um, you really are inspired in a positive way about running the studio in a green or eco-responsible way. Um, why, why is, maybe that's an obvious question, but why do you do, bother to do that? Mary. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, it's a logical thing, and I think a lot of yoga studios are doing uh -huh. that these days. Yeah. That, and, and, you know, as you start to think about yoga mats and, and, uh, the fact that you're in there and your face is on the floor and you're right. putting your face on you know, cleaners that are toxic. Right. It's just a sort of a logical thing for one's own protection. But also, you know, as you start to do yoga, you care about other people, obviously. Hmm. OK. <laughs> See, well. if you came to the studio, you know. Right. OK. Um, well, we have to cut to commercial. We're sponsored by Pepsi, a generous, <laughs> wonderful uh, corporate sponsor. Um, but thank you very much. And um, I'll ask you to stick around for a minute, yeah. if that's OK. All right, Richard Freeman and Mary Taylor. Yeah.